In this video, we're going to talk about the market model of perfect competition. There's a number of basic assumptions in the model of perfect competition. The first is that there's very many buyers and sellers. The product they're producing is assumed to be identical. When you buy the product, you don't care who produced it because the output of each and every firm is identical to that of every other firm. We're also assuming that all buyers and sellers have perfect information about alternative prices and the availability of the product. We're also going to assume that because there are so many buyers and sellers and the product is identical and everyone knows what alternative prices are, all the buyers and sellers are effectively price takers. From the seller standpoint, if a seller tried to charge more than every other firm, no one would buy it. And there's no reason why they would charge less because we're assuming they're going to be able to sell as much as they want at the prevailing market price. In other words, each individual buyer and seller is so small relative to the market that their individual purchases or sales will not be enough to influence the overall market because each firm and each buyer constitutes a tiny proportion of the overall market. No buyer is large enough that their purchases will affect the price and no seller is big enough that their sales will affect the market price. We're also going to assume that there are no barriers to entry or to exit. Firms are able to freely enter the market or freely leave the market. The equilibrium price is determined by the interaction between market demand and market supply. So the market determines the price, and we said that each individual firm is a price taker. What that means effectively is that the demand curve facing each firm is going to be perfectly elastic at that market price. Whether the firm produces one unit of output or 100,000 units of output, the amount that they're going to receive per unit is just the price of the good. Let's talk a little bit about the profit maximizing behavior of firms. We know that economic profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost. And remember, we're talking about total opportunity cost here or total economic cost. One thing we can ask is what would happen if the quantity of output rises? Looking at that equation, we can know that if you produce more output and you sell it at this market price, you're going to end up with more total revenue. So an increase in quantity raises revenue for the firm, but the increase in output also raises the firm's cost. So we have two competing effects here. When you produce one more unit of output, you gain more in revenue, but your costs go up. And those two effects have an opposite effect on your profit. The increase in revenue would raise your profit, the increase in cost would lower it. So whether profits rise or fall, depends on whether revenue rises by more or less than costs do. In particular, we can note that if revenue goes up by more than cost, then the firm will end up with higher profits. So if you sell one more unit of output and you gain $10 worth of revenue and it costs you eight, your profits would increase by $2. On the other hand, if your costs go up by more than your revenue does, then your profits will go down. For example, again, suppose that you can receive additional revenue of $8, but now it costs you $9 to produce that extra output. In that case, the production of that additional output would end up lowering your profits. In general, this is what's going to guide the firm's decisions. If the additional revenue is more than the additional cost, the firm is going to produce more because it would increase its profit. If the additional costs are more than the additional revenue for that last unit, though, the firm is likely to cut back on its production. Now, let's talk about these concepts in more detail we're going to engage in marginal analysis. And what we know is that the changes in revenue and the changes of cost determines whether producing more or less will be profitable. We can define the change in revenue that occurs when you produce one more unit as marginal revenue. Earlier, we defined marginal cost to be the change in cost when output changes by one unit. So marginal revenue is the extra revenue you gain. Marginal cost is the additional cost of producing one more unit of output. So if a firm sells more output, its profits will go up if the additional revenue is greater than the additional cost or simply if marginal revenue exceeds marginal cost. On the other hand, if marginal revenue is less than marginal cost, its profits will fall. So this is going to be the decision rule that a firm will look at in determining whether to produce more or less output. If the additional gain, the additional revenue is more than the additional cost, it will produce more. On the other hand, if the additional revenue is less than the additional cost, it would be better off producing less output. 
if marginal revenue just equals marginal cost, there would be no change in profits. Now, we've talked about marginal cost before. Let's talk a little bit about marginal revenue. Marginal revenue, by definition, is the change in total revenue over the change in quantity. In the special case of a perfectly competitive market, though, the additional revenue you get when you sell one more unit of output is nothing more than the price of that output. Because if you're selling output for $5 per unit, if you sell one more unit, you end up with $5 in additional revenue. So marginal revenue equals the price, and we know that the demand curve facing a firm is perfectly elastic. So the marginal revenue curve is the demand curve that faces a perfectly competitive firm, and it's just horizontal or perfectly elastic at the prevailing market price. Now, using the marginal analysis we've just talked about, we can combine this marginal revenue curve with a marginal cost curve. Let's just consider a few different levels of output. If output is equal to Q1, then marginal revenue would equal P0 because that's constant at all levels of output for a perfectly competitive firm, but its marginal cost would be MC1. So what would happen in that case is that the firm gains more in revenue by producing an additional unit of output at Q1 units of output than it costs to produce that output, so the firm would produce more output. That's going to be true whenever the marginal revenue curve is above the marginal cost curve. On the other hand, if we look at output level Q2, the marginal cost is now equal to MC2, which we read from the marginal cost curve, and marginal revenue is still equal to P0. So the marginal cost of that last unit of output at output equals Q2 costs more than the firm receives in revenue, which means the firms could increase its profit by producing less output. So what that tells us is that whenever marginal cost is above marginal revenue, the firm produces less. Whenever marginal cost is below marginal revenue, the firm produces more. If it's optimal for the firm to produce anything at all, the profit maximizing or loss minimizing level of output will always occur at the point where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. In this diagram, that occurs at an output level of Q0.